has contemporary philosophy become so withdrawn from organized struggle that it can only conceive of transformation by recourse to minimal individuals? Is this all we can ha hope for? Contemporary thought seems to have opted for two extreme responses, the radically pessimistic or minimalistic or the baseless optimistic. The great problems we face today is the growing impasse of the way out. This problem is all the more acute in the present situation, which is characterized by the worldwide victory of neoliberalism, this being the new regime of mastery that knows no limit, no art outside, and therefore no exception, in particular no point of the real of estimate point from which uh, to launch resistance. So what are the negative implications of this disjunction of thought and rebellion? Thought ceases to be politically subversive, worse, thought is worth its name only by being conservative, hostile to all forms of rebellion. Rebellion, on the other hand, is true to its nature only by being thoughtless, thoughtless violence. As a consequence of this separation or dissociation from the rebellion, thought has become powerless to produce material effects in the world. In view of this, I will argue that if there is to be a politics of emancipation for the 21st century, we need to re-examine or examine a new link between politics and philosophy in terms of an ally alliance rather uh, than in terms of a mutual exclusion. Based on this sketchy presentation of the different possible readings of Marx's 11 thesis, I will argue that all three readings must be brought together in order to establish a new relationship between philosophy and politics. Starting from this general principle, I will therefore neither claim, as the transformative reading does, that philosophy should be realized in a sense that it then could itself practically intervene in the world, and thereby, and thereby would be able to dire directly change the world. Nor will I claim, as the reverse in reading does, that the only task of philosophy is to offer always renewed interpretation of the change, which are always already taking place in the world. Finally, I will not claim with the exaggerating reading that it is only by or through interpretation that the world itself and its past can be changed. I would rather argue that the contemporary reading of the Levin thesis requires first that philosophy has to change through a gesture, an act which is properly philosophical, yet cannot be um, reduced to an interpretation. Second, that one can conceive a philosophic of this philosophical act in a way that is different from the transformative and reversed reading of the Levin thesis as it is neither critical nor always already determined by the changes occurring in the world. And thirdly, that one can take up the exaggerating reading yet in a different way by insisting that this philosophical act can help us avoid the grip of the present hegemonic ideological discourse by returning to a seemingly obsolete moment from the past the real of the times or moments of eternity, the expression is from uh, um, uh, Foucault's what is in enlightenment, that transcend different times and worlds. If philosophy, as I will argue, is capable of retrieving a time-breaking novelty while taking into a consideration the world as it is, this is because the moment of this new that insist interest philosophy, although created in a gi given particular situation, is nevertheless capable of trans transcending the world in which it has taken birth. The task of contemporary philosophy remains, therefore, to be of one's time through an unprecedented manner of not being in one's time. In this view, philosophy's immediate goal is not to change the world, but our way of thinking. Ultimately, the task of philosophy today should be to strive for a revolution in mind, one that would help restore thought's capacity for action. Thus, it is precisely in turning to the present conjecture, qualified as empty time in which nothing new emerges, that philosophy finds itself assigned a new supplementary task. It is precisely in the present conjecture of the amnesia of the possibility of another world 
that the articulation of philosophy's contemporaneity to the question of transmission has attained its central place. It is not a question here of merely bridging the temporal gap between the generation of the 60s and the present generation. What is at stake here is nothing less than the possibility of transmission under the circumstances of contemporary nihilism, a transmission from the eventual generation, a generation that in effect experienced in the 60s, if only for a brief moment, the possibility of a new beginning in the guise of a categorical departure from the existing state of affairs to a properly nihilistic generation marked not by the event by, but by its absence, a generation that was literally marked by the nothing, a generation that was under the spell of the dominant ideology according to which a b new beginning is no longer possible. Sabrán ustedes que a diferencia de lo que sucede acá en Argentina, eh, el ámbito natural en el que surge el psicoanálisis este, en Eslovenia es la filosofía y la política y no la práctica clínica. Entonces sabrán ustedes que para esta línea de pensadores eslovenos no resulta tan extraña la relación entre política y psicoanálisis o filosofía y psicoanálisis. Este, que es tan resistida por nuestros lares, ¿eh? esta, esta relación entre psicoanálisis y, y política. Es decir, que mientras que la ontología brinda cimientos firmes desde donde construir un pensamiento político, el psicoanálisis viene a socavar estos fundamentos y hace tambalear el edificio de las dos grandes líneas de tradición del pensamiento político tanto el liberalismo como el marxismo. Cuando hablamos de esta relación incómoda entre política y psicoanálisis, alguna vez recordamos esa mítica frase que dicen que Freud le susurró a Jung cuando estaban llegando a, al puerto de Nueva York, este, dicen que le dijo, no saben que le traemos la peste. Esta es la peste que trae el psicoanálisis a la política. No dice que no se pueda gobernar, analizar o educar. Dice que los resultados serán siempre insuficientes. Lo que el psicoanálisis viene a poner de relieve es la dimensión incalculable de la política. Viene a decir que todo el edificio teórico de las ciencias políticas está montado sobre un imposible. <risa>